Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's the Grand Cruise Daily Fantasy Podcast, where I'm going to look at little plays and strategies specifically designed for GPPs. This is a show for people who are already informed on daily fantasy sports and how these contests operate. If you have a question late and ask her, it is a stupid question. Feel free to shoot them away on Twitter, Brandon Cruz, DFS. Most importantly, take everything here with a grain of salt and use your best judgment making entries digitally. If you have a gambling addiction, that's just not my problem. Check your sensitive feelings at the door. We're talking about the truck series at Texas here now before we get into it i want to show you a, a trend larry max trends of the races as we look at the fall race in texas and now that we're we only have one race in texas this year at least we, we should unless i'm going insane here yeah we only have one race this year in texas we've we've already seen and i talked about in dirtier podcast a little bit that we're seeing cautions almost throughout every series towards the end of every race like i'm tomorrow friday i'm, I'm probably going to spend a while really trying to pinpoint when most cautions are coming out and trying to actively build lineups for late race chaos and stuff. I just need to do that in general. We've seen that becoming more and more relevant, but specifically Texas Motor Speedway for the truck series has been a wreck fest. I mean, for, for lack of a better term. So let's take a look at racing reference really quick. Oh, he's showing racing reference. Oh, he's not working. Look, I'm just doing this for visualizations. but as you look at, at the spring races, Okay, I mean, this is a lot of wrecks for a spring race. This is uh, the 2018 spring race here at Texas. Then you get to the fall race. Okay, not that crazy, but still more, you know, issues than we would expect with only 32 cars. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the spring race in 2019. Okay, so uh, between 23rd and 32nd, they DNF'd. And then we, we have some stragglers here, you know, stragglers who shouldn't be scoring well. You know, Jennifer Joe Cobb finishing 18th. Jesse Awuji finishing 17th. You know, Bubba Wallace, you know, getting involved in a wreck. Brett Moffitt getting involved in a wreck. Like, we're seeing these punt plays come through uh, and, and and finish well. Let's really look at the, the wrecks here, you know. So continuing on, oh, we have more and more wrecks. So the fall race in 2019 you know, from 32nd to 18th, just or 19th, wiped out. You got, good Lord Almighty, Norm Benning, Jennifer Joe Cobb making their way through. I guarantee you one of those is optimal. I don't have the optimal lineups pulled up right now, but I guarantee you if I look at them, I'll see them in there. So we get to last year's race with no practice. The first race, because we raced here twice last year because we had to make up a, uh, a race where they couldn't go whatever. Still, so we had 36 cars up to 27th had issues. You know, we, so we get to the fall race. I don't, was it this? I'm pretty sure it was this one because this was the first big race that Tate Fogelman was chalk. And people really didn't know who Tate Fogelman was. They were like, uh, you know, he's cheap. You know, we, we have to go here. And they kept wrecking people and wrecked after wreck after wreck after wreck. You know, you had racists really wrecked by themselves. You had uh, Stuart Friesen and Jody Sauter, two guys that I was very heavy on, looking optimal, wrecking each other for a good finish. And then you have the 18 and 99 wrecking. And then you have just just wrecks and wrecks and wrecks and wrecks in this race. And we've seen punt plays come through here. Yet again, Jennifer Jo Cobb, bless her. Bless her. Bless Jennifer Jo Cobb's soul. This is probably her best track. Statistically, she probably has more top 30 finishes here than plate tracks. But we're seeing issues. We're seeing these wrecks happen in the truck series. And this is a real concern. And we've already seen them wreck at other tracks this year. We've already seen it. So just get ready for chalk to bust, for drivers to get involved in wrecks. It always happens in Texas. For whatever reason, Texas, as I stated before, truck series, you know, they wreck everywhere. But Texas has always been a bad tra a track for the truck series. That's just how it is. And so keep that in mind when we're looking at um, this week's at this week's field, especially when you got a lot of place differential in the back that has a chance to not work out, you know, or that has a chance to get caught up in a wreck. For Brennan Poole, same situation. He got in the wall. Um, was it this race? I remember probably wasn't this one. It was the one before. Uh, where are we at? 30 car brought it out. I don't remember which one. Brennan Poole, all he had to do, I guess he put it in the wall during green. I don't remember exactly what race it was. It, it was probably the same one with Tate Fogelman uh, last year because, where are you at? Poole. Real quick. I guess I should have uh, looked this up so it wasn't here. Probably this one. Yeah, Brennan Poole. Uh, so this was another race. Um, I guess we had Tate Fogelman races back to back. 
that he was chalking. So he finished 33rd. Yeah, so both races last year. I remember Fogelman was chalk. Poole was chalk. Or at least I have him. So maybe that's why I remember him, him, him wrecking or hitting the wall by himself. And, uh, you know, people like Johnny. So anyway, like that that's a real concern. Keep that in mind this week when you're making lineups in a race where this is the day race, correct? Let me check really fast here. But if this is the the day race with no with no practice on a hot slick Texas Motor Speedway track with a ton of PJ1 up towards the wall, if you I don't know if you watch IndyCar at all, but IndyCars they were absolutely dead. If you got in the PJ1, you spun out, hit the wall at a turn two. We saw cars, or we saw the trucks specifically get in the PJ1 at Charlotte and wreck in practice like crazy. This is setting up for an ugly, ugly race. My bad. The Xfinity Series race is the uh, noon race. Either way, the Truck Series is 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 very, very, very concerning here. Um, I expect lineups that look good to do terrible, and I expect lineups that look bad to do well. That's just how it's going to be this week. Now, once we got that out of the way, looking towards um, value, looking towards guys that I want to have in a player pool, looking at looking towards guys that I want to put in lineups. And we'll talk about lineups a bit once we get through, you know, kind of ranking everybody here. And uh, I got a lot of feedback last week on the videos of saying, hey, do you guys like this type of stuff? And, you know, used to remember the old the OG Brandon Cruz subscribers. You know, you remember I, I used to make like an hour and a half or maybe not an hour and a half, but an hour, hour, 10 minutes, 50 minute videos for the truck series and Xfinity series uh, really diving in to, oh, you know, this team's running this chassis from this race and specific. I mean, people don't give a shit about that anymore. But if you guys do want to know that like let me know because typically i've just kind of transformed this into a rankings show and a pick show but if you guys want the information you know kind of written out to you you know just let me know and i'll I'll start kind of putting that back in videos but typically people don't really care or if they care you know they're part of my patreon and they ask me in discord or they send me messages on twitter you know things that nature so uh, join the patreon send me money on paypal please uh it's a lot easier than OnlyFans or cam soda what's the other one i'm trying to think chatterbait yeah a lot easier than that just send me money so i don't have to go on chatterbait um i absolutely love i i had so many tabs open up on both i'm surprised this computer hasn't or chrome hasn't killed this computer yet um i love i love john her uh rhodes is is right under a 5x value for me got no interest in hosevar got and i told last week i i called it man not last week, but at Charlotte, I was like, in the live show, Hosevar is going to either lose somebody a lot of money or win somebody a lot of money. I don't have the nuts to play him. I don't have the balls. Not going to do it. And he was optimal. Anyone, he was in the optimal lineup. Uh, the same situation. I just, unless I'm forced there, but he's, he's priced up this week to where it, I mean, it's, it's a pain to get him in lineups. And man, you really need him to hold. And I guess, I mean, Hosevar has talent, but man. In a race where I think people are going to wreck, doesn't Hosevar scream as a guy who's going to wreck in this race? You know, doesn't Todd Gillen scream as a guy who's going to make a mistake at wreck here? That's just how I look at it. Uh, Austin Hills, right at a four value for me. Typically, I hate four values, um, but he's not the worst play. Uh, Friesen, going to be in the same realm, kind of a four. I'll probably end up getting to him just because I'm putting more uh, lineups in this week, just because... If you've already seen the Cup Series video, I don't really care about the All-Star, All-Star race at all. Uh, Chandler Smith, I don't like. I don't like Krause. Uh, Dollar, I don't like him. Uh, I got Drew Dollar projected for 24 points. Not a big fan there. Live show, I live show is probably going to be like a 10 Eastern on Saturday. I'll probably end up talking about both races there. Um, I'll probably build all the lineups tomorrow just so I can get out of the way. Uh, but if you want to tune in 10 a.m. Eastern on Saturday uh, for the live show. Where was I at here? Haley Deegan's a no. Austin Wayne Self is a no. Now, if you're you, if you're in situations to where, you know, you're in the 6K range, like I have Haley right now projected for 21 points. I got Austin Wayne Self for 22. I, I don't see him doing much more than that. I'm not going to go to, to Ryan Tricks. And then we, we start getting to Matt Craft and Creed. These are the guys that I want to try and target. And one of these guys I want to get in the lineup, specifically paired with John Her Nemechek, because the front of the field, Nemechek should run away with this race. And just look at the look at the speed, look at the lap data, look at how he's been finishing, look at the driver rating, look at look at the vitacine positions, look at how he's been at every intermediate track this 
race, especially at a one groove racetrack where he has the inside lane. I don't expect the outside lane to pass him on the outside. Uh, out of two, he should easily clear the field down the back straightaway. John Hermanchik should lead a ton of laps. I'm trying to spread out um, fast laps and laps led just so the optimizers want to use different people with these guys. But right now, just as a baseline, I got uh, John Hermanchik for 62 laps led and 34 fast laps. I know Chase Elliott's in this race. I know Enfinger's starting in the back. He's been really quick. Sheldon Creed's in the back. But I just think John Hermanchik, with that track position, just stays out and leads a ton of races. And now, if he kind of messes up the... Where was it? I think it was Charlotte. Off the top of my head. Was it Charlotte? or uh, I just went blank. On a, what race was it this year where he got passed by Creed? Where Creed got wrecked. Uh, was it Charlotte? La yeah, it was Charlotte with uh, Gillen. Because Gillen took uh, Creed out. I just I don't know why it took me so long to remember that. Um, but if Nemechek, for whatever reason, isn't on pace or he doesn't have the speed, I would I would put Ben Rhodes into that position to lead laps. And that's why I have Rhodes as a beat. Like I, I expect to have lineups with John Hermanchek, and then I expect to build lineups with Ben Rhodes, expecting you know John Hermanchek to fail or whatever. It's, it kind of goes back to whenever I make a lineup, I'm assuming that lineup, no matter if I build 1, 2, 5, 20, whatever it is, each of those lineups, when I build them or when I look at them, I'm assuming they're optimal. So, you know, if I'm building a lineup with Ben Rhodes and I'm not playing tricks or I'm not playing Nemechek, it's because I believe that Ben Rhodes is going to be optimal per, for that lineup. Hopefully that makes sense or whatnot. Anyway, let's continue on through here. Let's continue on going through. If I can find where it was, we're at Johnny Sauter right now. Johnny Sauter, 4.5 value. Uh, let's see here. Grand Enfinger. I absolutely love Grand Enfinger. I'll probably be overweight on the field of, of Enfinger. Uh, I absolutely love Crafton, and I absolutely love Enfinger here. I think they're too cheap. I think both these guys are going to finish in the top six. That's just how it is. Now, yet again, it's a wreck fest. We've seen guys who were extremely fast and who were doing well get caught up. I talked to you about that Stuart Friesen instant. I talk, so let's let's take a get, let's take a look back at who 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 fits the mold for somebody like Creed, for somebody like Crafton, for somebody like Infinger, even Chase. Who's that star stud who struggled? You can throw Eckes in there. Eckes had a good Eckes is with a good team. It doesn't matter how piss poor his driving skill is. That's a top ten car. So we got Eckes had an issue. We had Friesen have an issue. We had Trevor Bain have an issue. I mean, it was an engine. Trevor Bain, Gillen, Enfinger. So that's five, you know, true, good, fast cars have issues. Now, whether it's engines, crashes, that's just how it was. We go back even farther. You know, yet again, we have Gillen. We have Austin Hill, Poole, Johnny Sauter, Tanner Gray. I remember Tanner Gray was extremely chalky here as well. So we're seeing that guys who are like, wow, they're great plays. I expect them to fail. I would not be shocked if we have Creed DNF, if we have Kraft and DNF, if we have shot any of these guys crashing. I, I fully expect everybody to have the same potential to wreck. If I was still filling out the DF the DNF factor, I guess we could just put it high. Oops. High on everyone. Just 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 going down, you know what I mean? Because everybody has the same amount of um, chance to wreck here. That's just how it's gonna be. Uh, Chris Wright, right at 4X. Uh, yet again, screaming a guy who is going to cause a wreck. Screaming at a guy who's going to cause issues or just have a have a problem here. You know, Gray, I just showed that Gray's had issues here. Um, 10th and 36th, that's his last two finishes here. You know, par for the course for Tanner Gray. He's either going to do great or he's going to do terrible. Uh, that's just how it is. So right now we got Tanner Gray. As a no for me, but I would not fault you if you play him. That's just how it's going to be for me. Um, Corey Roper is the worst play on the slate. <laughs> I have him as graded as the worst play uh, imaginable. So here's another thing, and it I haven't been able to find anything. Normally I can find them either through racing reference, but they got through the, they got rid of the comments there, or through Twitter. But people really haven't been talking a whole lot. I know. Uh, Brad Keselowski, not Brad Keselowski, Brian Keselowski. Let me see if I can bring up that tweet really quick. It's relating to um, the purse for Texas. I know for a fact that the Xfinity Series typically has their larger purses for the intermediates here at Texas. I believe it's still the same for the truck series here. And maybe, what the heck, why is Brian Keselowski not popping up here? I put brain. It would help if I would spell his name correctly. 
Um, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, so what is he? He's uh, Brian Keselowski. And say what you will about Brian Keselowski. If he was great, he wouldn't be getting fired from everybody's team. But he, he does have some you know, good uh, things to bring up every now and then. So Brian Keselowski, go figure. Truck race ends up not even having 40 cars. But I bet next week is 44 or more. Weird season so far. Some stuff just doesn't make sense. We are bringing a really nice piece. Um, hopefully we get some decals on it. I'm assuming he's referring to the purse there because he, he he's surprised that this one just isn't having a lot of people here versus you know other like even though i was kind of shocked normally a lot of people try and qualify for the texas races in the lower series so i'm still going to assume that texas let me look through let's do it together really quick let's oh yeah here uh i probably have the purse right here so Let's just compare really quick. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place in this video. I told you it was going to be an hour. I said on Twitter, I said I told you guys on Twitter we're going to be here for an hour because we're going to put more time and effort into the uh, uh, into the races here. So let's let's just take a gander at the purse really quick. Uh, it's fourth worth, almost six hundred. Certainly, uh, uh, Chicago maybe due to the fact that they're in Chicago, but certainly on the higher end of the purses on the higher average. Even uh, even Fort Worth's paying higher than you know Charlotte back in the day. Uh, Dover, Dover Downs usually pays well. Uh, what was this 2015? Kind of shrunk in 2014. Last time it here, nearly that's a lot of money for the Truck Series race. That's a that's a ton of money for Truck Series. So if we got to imagine that they're still paying that out here, which I know they have been. I'm um, just trying to confirm for this week. I, this is probably one of the better paying purses for uh, the truck series. Let's just see what these guys are getting paid. I, I always like looking at I wish they'd still show us what they make. Oh, my God. They got rid of the comment. They got rid of the commas. God, dude, they, they destroyed race and reference. It's, it looks absolutely disgusting. 9,000 9, to start and park is pretty good. Um, know how Marcus, Marcus Lemonis is paying 15000 to have Camping World or Good Sam or whatever dumb shit he's selling on the trucks. Well, you get fifteen grand for finishing 21st back in a 2015. It's, it's probably somewhere still in the range of that. So I would imagine maybe ten grand uh, for like probably 28th, somewhere around there, if things are still going kind of around this way. And so, this, I mean, this is a good paying event. It's always paid well for the truck series. So... Brian Kozlowski, Dawson Cram. I'm purposely, or I'm personally not on him. I don't like Dawson Cram a ton. I have him projected for 13 points, um, just because I think he's starting too high up. But keep that in mind. I, I think that's why we see a lot of the lower teams. You know, Jennifer Joe Cobb purposely, you know, make sure she has a car to run because I think this race pays substantially more than other places. I could be wrong there. I don't have any evidence right now to support that. But in the past, it's been that way. Certainly for the Xfinity series. Um, I'm pretty sure it's like that for the truck series. Uh, sorry for the long explanation there. I'm sure I've lost people. Just get to the damn picks, yeah, goober. Let's see. And I another thing here, and we'll we'll talk about the optimizer in a bit. But this pricing is super tight, which is why which is why I brought up which is why this is why I started the whole video by looking at the finishing order. Of these ugly back markers, Jennifer Joe Cobb, Norm Benning, Ray Cicerelli. When you're trying to fit in all these 10K guys and everything in a race where I believe it's still going to be a wreck fest in some form or fashion, I have, I don't mind even a wooji, a wooji, a wooji. Uh, fan, <laughs> people want to vote him into the all star race. A bunch of morons. Anyway, uh, like these are not terrible plays. If there's a place I want to play Racist Rally at 4,800, if there's a place I want to play Norm Benning at 4,600, it's Texas Motor Speedway in the truck series. So keep that in mind as well. I know they look horrible. I don't have these guys project do well right now because I can't. I, I have to project, you know, like Norm Benning in a case that there's no wrecks. Just... Otherwise, if I give them, you know, eight positions because I'm projecting for Rex, it's going to want to shove them in everything. Right now, I'm giving Norm Benning one position, eight DraftKings points, but I know it's going to be higher than that, especially if there's Rex. And so I do not mind 
plain, these back markers in the back. So keep that in mind. Don't be scared if you end up there. I certainly don't mind punting because punting has been uh, optimal. And it's been it's done very well here at Texas Motor Speedway. And I expect these morons to continue wrecking. Brennan Poole's back. Thank you. I like Brennan Poole. I think he'll do well. Same thing with Chase Purdy. I don't hate these guys. I, I do not hate these guys at all. A Wooji is hard for me. To, it's hard to sell. I'm not going to play Howie. Tate, if the rate... I feel like Tate's going to wreck. I, I god dang know it. I, I do not mind these guys in the back in a wreck fest. Don't go overboard on them. But I think... I think nearly all my lineups are going to have in and out of these guys just because I'm going to be chasing, you know, Chastain, Elliot, John Herney, Machekin, and you need a punt there. Uh, Josh Berry, I don't think Josh Berry works, uh, only due to the fact that if he's getting positions, excuse me, and he's in the uh, the Racky car, whatever, the, the Timothy Peters one. I don't know why Timothy Peters got pushed out of that car. It's the car, not Timothy Peters. But anyway, Josh Berry's in that. Uh, I don't think he's going to do that well, but in a race where there's going to be a wreck fest, maybe you feel safer in, in Josh Berry. You know, I know it's going to sound stupid, but head to head, Josh Berry or like Ray Cicerelli, I'll take the discount for Ray Cicerelli. That's just how it's going to be there. I will, I will happily, happily play Ray Cicerelli. So looking at early, you know, lineups or looking at how everything's wanting to go, where are we looking at right now? It's telling me. I gotta play Ray Cicerelli. I gotta get to Norm Benning. I got to get to people like Tate Fogelman. I got to get to people like Jennifer Joe Cobb. It's actually liking Jennifer Joe Cobb more um, than I thought it would. But it it's saying play these ugly ass back markers, man. <laughs> play these ugly, ugly mother truckers. And there's there's an argument to be made that I think I think Fogelman's gonna be chalky because he's starting here and everybody's like, oh, I gotta jam in these these back markers. At Norm Benning or, 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 you know, Tate Fogelman. I'm going to go Tate Fogelman. And then Tate Fogelman wrecks. And, you know, I don't be afraid to get different this week, especially with how small the the, the contest is. I, I really, really like this lineup. But right now it, it's telling us play uh, Chase Elliott, Matt Crafton, uh, Sheldon Creed together. And it's like, you know, Matt Crafton, um, uh, Grant Enfinger, you know, uh, Johnny Sauter even, you know, John Harry Machek, like it, it's looking for the place differentials. It's looking for the guys who should run well, who should finish in the top 10 when this race, you know, inevitably goes green and then wrecks at the end. But people like John Harry Machek, people like Matt Creed, pe- uh, or <laughs> Matt Creed, Matt Craft and Sauter, you know, it, it's these guys that I love here. Um, I'm not going to hate myself if I end up playing Dawson Crab. I'm not going to hate myself if I end up on Ryan Trex when I'm going through lineups tomorrow, but that's just how it's going to be. I'm, I'm focusing on the place differential here, and hopefully I can just make enough lineups to cover myself uh, when these guys, uh, you know, choose to really tear up some shit later in the race and, and, and wreck the field. That's how we're looking at it right now. Um, yeah. I I fully expect I expect this race to be a wreck fest. I think that's how it, it might be late in the race. Just something's going to happen. It always happens in Texas. Like, it's it's an outlier of how many cars get torn up at Texas in the truck series. So keep that in mind when you're building lineups. Um, I know it's going to hurt somebody's lineup. I, I just know it. I just know it. I thought this race. I thought this was going to be a longer video, but I think I covered everything there. And so um, check out the Cup Series video when I basically tell you to not play money, to not play the contest, not play the slate, and then look at the Xfinity Series video whenever that gets uh, put up. So thank you guys for checking me out, and we'll see you later. Donate PayPal so I don't have to. Sell my body online.